What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. Today we are diving into a brand new technique for VO3, which allows you to prompt and have much greater control over your outputs. It is honestly mind blowing that the community has found out about this little secret hack. And even crazier, this technique is actually two techniques unlocking a whole lot more creativity from this tool. These techniques take VO3 to a whole nother level and VO3 was already impressive. So I'm super excited to dive into these. I know you are too. All right, let's go. Okay, so here I am in Flow, which is a way that you can access VO3. It's their user interface that has a lot more control than just using Gemini because you're not just dealing with prompts, but you actually are able to get this interface, which allows you to do things like text to video, frames to video, and also ingredients to video. One thing I will warn you though off the bat, if you aren't a paid subscriber, you're gonna see this ingredients to video being locked and it's gonna say that it's only available for the Ultra Plan. Forewarning, their Ultra Plan is extremely expensive. It's about $125 on their discounted price. But even then, I wanted to warn everyone that's watching that if you're hoping to use ingredients to video with VO3, you're not gonna be able to do this because as soon as you go ahead and try to click generate, let's say I clicked on ingredients to video and I combine in it, let's do this character and then let's also have Gabe our dog over here and if I was to say the man pets the dog and I tried to click generate all the way up until this point you're gonna see that it looks like it's working but then now all of a sudden it says this feature isn't supported on VO3 quality. That's a little bit of a bait and switch that I don't want anyone to get mistaken by. Anyways though, this is not the technique that we're gonna be showing you that unlocks a whole lot more creativity. So let's dive right in and let me show you what these outputs look like. So first off, here I have as my frames to video, and you'll see that my input image has annotations on top of it. And that's the first technique that I wanted to show you, which is adding annotations to your input frames. And this is extremely powerful because it allows you to go beyond just simple prompting, but be able to draw over certain sections of your video and describe what happens in those sections. So here is what that full image looks like. We have four annotations over this input image, and this was just created very quickly in a matter of minutes using in Canva. So I've selected out this area and I've typed in rocks fall from cliff. And then I also have car drives forward, camera tracks car, as well as an arrow marking which direction the car is driving. And then we also have large waves splash against rocks and a large sea monster with giant tentacles emerges from the water. So with traditional prompting, it'd be very difficult to describe this exact scene and where we want everything to occur. And instead, if we were just to use an input image, when we have elements that aren't naturally inside of the scene, like a large sea monster with giant tentacles, sometimes VO3 or another video generation tool would just omit that section from itself and just try to make something that looks a little bit more cohesive to its input frame. So the really cool thing about having annotations though is that we can actually start to introduce new elements that are not natively inside of this frame. As we can tell, it has followed every single prompt to a T. So we even have the rocks falling from the cliff, the car drives in the proper location, and we also have this large sea monster emerging from the water. And it's not just any sea monster, it's one with very large tentacles that we can see just burst out from the ocean, and this looks amazing. Now, while this is an amazing technique, one issue with doing this method is that we do end up with this text over our video and it lasts a little bit longer for some sections of it than others. So as a little bit of a helpful technique that I've also found is to put right before the rest of our prompt, text disappears instantly. And here is what this generation looks like now, where we have essentially the same exact prompt, but we have text disappears instantly right before it. And so this is an awesome video generation technique that you can use today to make your outputs much more controllable. But let's just not leave it at this simple scene. Let's actually show you how this works using a tool like Canva and how to really get the most out of this. So here I have that example scene set up, but I have all these other scenes as well that I wanna be able to animate and have just as much control over. I also wanna see a large sea monster emerge from this water, even though it's on an alien planet. And another technique that I found is that if you're using numbers inside of your annotations, VO3 will handle those in sequence, so you're able to actually set something as happening at number one and at number two. Or if you have two text annotations with the same number, it could be both one and one, then they're gonna happen at the same time. 
So let's try to have a large sea monster with giant tentacles emerges from the water. And I also want to be able to have one of these birds fly down and grab a fish. Let's have this happen before. So a bird flies down and catches a fish from the water. And then I'll set this for number two. And I'll say a large sea monster emerges uh, from the water and we'll have this as the second one. So to fix this annotation, I'm actually gonna delete it from my text box here. And I'll just have the box over this bird. And then I can create a brand new text layer and I'll have this one outside of the box. I've found that VO3 has been fairly liberal with how you annotate to where you don't need white text and you don't need your text inside of boxes for it to work. It's pretty smart in being able to handle all the different motions and things that you wanna annotate over your input frame. So I can have this here for Let's change this back to number one. A bird flies down and catches a fish from the water. And then if we wanted to control the entire camera movement, we can either set a really big box around the entire scene and then have another text here, or we can also get away sometimes just by having a text at the bottom. So here I'm gonna have another annotation and here I'll put the camera zooms in slowly. And I wanna make the scene look a little bit more lived in and lively. So here I'll also have annotation that reads uh, the wind rustles uh, the tall grass. And now we should have a well annotated scene that we can use for VO3. And now let's click on frames to video. I'll click on upload. And then here VO3 is gonna prompt me to crop and save. And that's one caveat to remember when you're using VO3 is that it doesn't allow you to generate in any aspect ratio that you want. It's very specific in only handling 16 by nine at the moment. Once that is uploaded, it'll also still ask us to type in a prompt. The camera zooms in slowly. Bird flies down and catches a fish from the water. Then a large sea monster with the large tentacles put emerges from the water. And let's hit run and we should give this about a few minutes and we should have a final result then. All right, nice. I think that looks pretty good. So it actually handled the sequentiality of it pretty well to where we have those two distinct motions happening with those characters. And then we also have that camera zooming in and it almost looks like it's trying to follow the same way that we have the framing going to the lower section of the video. So the next super awesome technique that I wanna show you is using a JSON style prompt for VO3. And what this is, it's a much lengthier prompt than what we're normally used to. And it turns out that VO3 prefers this kind of format for its prompts because it's much more structured, much lengthier, and gives it a lot more information to understand what type of scene we're trying to create. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this cyberpunk chase scene comes out given this JSON style prompt. Awesome, so I think that came out really well. And just for comparison, let me show you another generation that I made when I was doing this without a JSON style prompt. So here I had one with a steady camera track Spider-Man as he swings through the dense city of Delhi, India. And I can already tell you that this one did not come out as well to where the motion looks very weird, it's very low quality, and it's not a fully coherent video. So we kind of have Spider-Man there, we have Delhi, India, but as far as him expertly swinging through the city, and I really wanted him to have some parkour elements as well, or just really to do his Spider-Man thing and make it look cool and fun. And we're not getting any of that at all here. So that's uh, one of the caveats of having such a shorter prompt. But of course, not everyone is gonna be able to type out an extremely long and dense prompt like this one. And so that's where an agent comes into play or your own custom GPT. So here I'll show you how I have it set up in my own chat GPT. You can actually use this with just about any LLM. This is my agent instructions that I have set up here to where it takes a very simple concept and then it focuses on these key fields such as description, style, camera, lighting, environment, elements, motion, ending, and text. And it can even go as far as even describing very specific timestamps to really help out VO3 with its generation. Even though I'm using this in ChatGPT, you can also use another LLM that is completely free to use. There's Gemini that you can also use, or you can also use DeepSeek. And you should also get back an awesome JSON style formatted prompt to where here I just pasted in the agent instructions. And then afterwards, VO3 was able to take my concept of a commercial in which a Tesla robot transforms from a car into a humanoid robot. It outputted out this 
which is a much better prompt than what I initially gave it. And then everything else from the style, camera, lighting, environment, elements, motion, ending, text, and keywords are just icing on the cake. And let's put this head to head now where we have Gemini's version and then we'll also try ChatGPT's version of this JSON style prompt. If you guys wanted to get access to these prompts, these agent instructions as well, we're gonna be leaving links down below so you can check them out and be able to use them in your own projects right away. All right, let's take a look at how this one came out. So let's try one super awesome example that I've seen a lot, which is make an Ikea commercial and let's see what we're able to generate. So while that's generating, I wanted to talk to you really quickly about our brand new advanced generative AI course that is launching this Monday. We've poured everything into making it the most comprehensive AI course out there today. And you don't just have to take our words for it. The people that have seen it so far have found it to be one of the most groundbreaking and revolutionary approaches to teaching generative AI. We're also backed by NVIDIA, which is a huge plus. So yeah, you know it's legit. I'm gonna have a link down below as well so you can check out the course, dive into the details. Right now we have a sale going on for the early enrollment for the first cohort ever. So that way when you sign up, you're getting a discount as well as all the benefits from our partners, free generation credits. This is the most comprehensive generative AI course that's out there available today. And it comes jam packed. There's about 38 lessons covering everything from generative AI theory all the way up to final post-production and VFX results. In addition to having all the pre-recorded lessons, we're also so having live sessions. That way you're not just learning this on your own, but you're actually gonna be a part of a full cohort community of others that are also learning with you. And of course, we're gonna be live there with you as well. So that way, if you have any questions, or have any projects in mind, we'll be able to help guide you through those projects with ease and hopefully help you land your next big job, your next client, or even help you launch your startup. We're extremely proud too to also have some of the best minds in generative AI coming on board to help us as guest experts and guest judges of the student work. And it's gonna be amazing because not only are you gonna get direct feedback on your AI outputs and your projects, but also you're gonna be able to learn from some of the brightest minds in the industry. We have people that have worked on Marvel movies, television productions, started university programs, as well as expert instruction from the people that have actually built the tools that you're gonna learn how to use. It's definitely something that we've poured our all into making sure that is the most comprehensive and value that you can get today to learn generative AI. And I didn't want it to just be something that you learn and then you forget next week and already it's obsolete. So we dive into the techniques, the tool sets, and the theory behind all of it. That way, whenever there's a new model update, it's not just a groundbreaking revolution, but instead just a logical increment on whatever you've learned from this course. Not only that, but the course also comes with 12 months of updates. So that way, whenever something new comes out, you're gonna be the first to learn about it. And I'm really excited to see everyone there. So make sure you go ahead and check that link down in that description to see the course page, as well as check out our full deep dive into the course modules and answer any sort of questions that you have. I'm already super excited because we have graphic novelists, musicians, as well as a whole bunch of innovative people who are just really excited to push generative AI to its limits and make something that's actually tangible and usable instead of some of the AI slop that you might see online. So yeah, this is gonna be huge. You don't wanna miss out on it. Check that link in that description. All right, let's get back to our VO3 generations. Okay, so here we are back in VO3. And now let's take a look at our IKEA scene in which we have this box sitting in the center of an empty white seamless space. All right, I think this looks pretty impressive already. I like that we actually have this bed frame. Uh, it does look like it definitely is a bed frame made of the cardboard box, which is a little bit silly. But other than that, it looks like something that would have been created using Blender or some sort of 3D software in the past. But now we're able to do this all with just a simple prompt and it only took us a matter of minutes to generate this. Even though I am talking about using VO3, it's actually not my favorite video generator at the moment. It does create some amazing videos. It has awesome audio with all the videos as well. But when it comes to prompt adherence, I have found that a better video generation like Hilo 2 tends to be my favorite and my go-to for creating some amazing looking scenes. So it's really hard to ever just recommend one video generator because they always have a little bit of their benefits as well as their caveats. And in order to grasp a hold of all these different tools, it's really helpful to take a look at some comparison videos. So I'll also have a link down below of us comparing Hilo 2, VO3, Kling 2.1, 
and mid journey across the board from text to video and image to video. That way you get a better understanding as to what tool is gonna to be right for you. Of course though, this is just the tip of the iceberg. And if you really wanna get serious about generative AI, and that's exactly what we cover in our course. We talk about things like training mini AI models like LoRa's, as well as some more advanced techniques and using the absolute latest AI models. So you don't wanna miss out on that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely check those links down in that description and I'll catch you in the next one. Until next time, all right, peace. Wait, you thought it was over? Nah, we just getting started. Check that link in the description to enroll in Black Mixture's Advanced Generative AI course today.